What's going on, everybody? This is going to be a, a new one, a new series. I know, very shocking for my channel, just starting random series all the time. This is going to be a new series on Jupyter Notebooks, how to use them, what to do with them, all kinds of cool stuff that you can do with Jupyter Notebooks. Um, and this is going to be the very basics, kind of. I'm going to skip over the how to install Jupyter Notebooks part. You can find that on a billion different blogs and a million different YouTube videos that may or may not do it better than I do. Um, so there's no real point in me kind of rehashing how to do that. I'm just going to show you how to actually start running them, how to work with them, you know, different kinds of fun stuff that you can do with Jupyter Notebooks and why I like them personally. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so I'm going to open up a couple of windows real quick. And here's, here's one of the use cases of Jupyter Notebooks. So Jupyter Notebooks are primarily used by people in data science. They're used for like big data applications. They're used for, um, you know, machine learning, things like that. Um, I've used them for everything from scraping to data visualization, but mainly with like some sort of data focus. Um, they're really good for kind of prototyping different Python code that, you know, maybe isn't like the best, maybe it's not the best application of just running it the normal way through Python. And I'm going to show you why um, here in a second um, through a web scraping example. But essentially, you know, Jupyter Notebooks are a way of both writing code, running code, and documenting code using Markdown in a way that, you know, kind of makes it more applicable to different machine learning and data science applications. Um, the Markdown part is actually pretty cool. You can write all of your notes and present it in a really pretty fashion using Markdown um, instead of just kind of writing ugly comments all over the place. So let's, in, instead of just, you know, me talking this entire time, I'm going to open up um, a browser window real quick, and you'll see why here in a second. Let's see, finance.yahoo.com. And let me open up the screen recording. So we've got finance.yahoo.com and we've got um, the Bitcoin price. Now I have already posted a video of me showing how to scrape um, different cryptocurrencies off of the Yahoo Finance website. Um, so I'll leave a link to that below in the corner, somewhere in the corner. Um, so you can view that, you know, at, at your leisure. But this is going to be all about how to kind of do things within Jupyter Notebooks context instead of doing things the normal Python way. So we've got this Yahoo Finance page and we've got this price. This is what we want to pull out. Um, so let's hop over to VS Code where I've gone ahead and created an IPYNB file. This is an IP a Python notebook file essentially that you're going to use to write your code. So we're going to go ahead and create what's called a cell. Everything in Jupyter works via cells. Basically the idea is, is that each individual cell is its own script that exports its globals and does all of these different things in a certain way, but you can run cells separately from each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a markdown cell and we're just going to call this Yahoo Finance Scraper. And this is using Markdown, so it's going to render fairly nicely if you open it in the, um, the normal Python interface or um, Jupyter Notebook interface. I'm not going to open it in that just because I prefer doing everything with it in VS Code. I let the flame wars continue. Um, so the purpose of this program is to scrape, um, is to scrape cryptocurrency prices from Yahoo Finance. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hit this check mark right here. That's um, to stop editing the cell. And as we can see, it renders very nicely as Markdown. Um, so this is one cell. We've gone ahead and run this cell. And with a Markdown cell, all that does is it just, you know, it, it renders it. Um, so we're going to add a code cell. This is going to be the first Python code cell that we run. And we're going to go ahead and do our imports. So we're going to import requests. And we're going to do import uh, it's from BS4, import beautiful soup as BS. Um, so that's going to be our imports. And let's go ahead and create our globals. This is the, like my way of setting up uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Um, I kind of tend to put all of the globals and imports and things like that at the beginning. You don't necessarily have to do that. Um, so we're gonna get our globals here. And we're going to do our base URL is equal to this. 
and we're going to do our tickers are equal to, we're going to do BTC USD, we're going to do Solana USD, we're going to do ETH USD, and what else? Um, Litecoin. Let's do LTC USD. All right, so we've got all of our tickers. We've got our base URL, which is going to be this right here. And like I said, if you want an explanation for what this code does, I'll give like a very brief one, but go back and watch the video that I linked up here or down there or somewhere. Um, and you know, you'll kind of get a feel for what this code actually does. I'm not going to go over it super in depth here. Um, so we've got our globals, we've got our imports, um, and that's really all we need to kind of get started. Now, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to run this real quick. Um, so let's go ahead and run this cell. I'm gonna use that kernel, that is the Python kernel that we're using. And just to kind of display what this does, let's do prints, import, import, and globals done. And we run it and we get our print. So I just ran it with control enter. You can also press this little run cell thing right here. Um, oh, nope, that's something different. Oh, that's just running that. Yeah, that is something different. Um, I think that's a debugger. Yeah, run line by line. We don't need that. Um, so let's exit out of here and we're going to create another markdown section. This is where it's really cool. You can really start like, you know, kind of editing things. You can actually add images through markdown, you know, all kinds of cool stuff that you can do here. So now we're going to, let's, let's call this section um, testing. And this is where I'm going to do limited testing. Oh wait, no, actually let's do this. Let's do grab the page source in the below section. I'm going to be pulling the page source and storing it. All right, so that's an explanation for what we're doing. Obviously, again, this is a very simplistic kind of example, but let's go ahead and do that. So page source is equal to, let's make this requests.get base URL. We're going to throw this into a for loop. Well, let's just test it on one ticker. So tickers at zero. So this is going to actually pull the page and then we're going to import it into a soup variable. So soup is equal to BS page source dot text. And we are going to use the HTML dot parser. So what this is doing is it's grabbing the page source using the request library. Um, and what we're doing is basically appending a finance.iu.com slash quote slash BTC dash USD. And as we can see, that's this page right here. It's gonna pull down this page source, which we can access through page underscore source dot text. We're going to parse this out with the beautiful soup HTML parser and um, include it in the soup variable. Now here's where things get cool. So I'm going to go ahead and run this using this play button right here. And as we can see, it ran, ran successfully, no issues, this little green check mark makes us feel a lot better. And just for the sake of illustration, grabbed it. Now let's parse. Now you're going to parse things out. All right, so again, really didn't need to do that. I could basically make all of this one code block and it would be fine. Um, so we want to find a specific piece of data. If we go back to our web page, we want to grab this price. Um, so 21,333. Um, so let's do an inspect on that. Um, as we can see by the highlight right here and the data right here, this is exactly what we want. We want data dash symbol equals BTC dash USD. And it is within a fin streamer tag. So here's how you do that within beautiful soup tag is equal to bs, uh, no, it's soup.find. And we are going to find a, I think it's called a fin.streamer. And we are going to use attributes is equal to, and we're looking for the data dash symbol, dash symbol, 
equal to BTC dash USD. And we're actually going to set this equal to, let's see, tickers at zero, just so it's kind of a little bit more correct. And we are going to print tag.text. So what this is going to do is it is going to parse through the beautiful soup object that we've got up here, and it is going to find the data that we want and hopefully print it out here. So let's go ahead and run that. 20,009s, that doesn't look quite right. Let's see where we are getting that. 20,009. I have no idea where it's saying that. Let's see if we've got a bad price. Huh. 20,009. I'll be damned, it's not there. Let's see if we can get a more up-to-date price, 20,009. That's weird. Um, but anyways, essentially it's supposed to pull the correct price out here. Um, that's just an issue. Let's try this. Let's find a good, a good class to pull from. And let's do then this. I believe what we're looking for is soup.find. Find. We're looking for a div whose, I think it's called ID. Yeah, ID is equal to that. Let's see if this works. Well, I'll be damned, it's giving us the same thing. Huh. And then this is for the BTC-USD. Yeah, I have no idea. Well, it's supposed to work correctly, but essentially the cool thing that you want to see here is, I just don't know why that's not working. That's so weird. Um, essentially the cool thing that you wanna see here is we're not having to make this web request again. Now, for people who are not familiar with, you know, a lot of web scraping stuff, that's a big deal. Basically, the more requests you make, the more likely you're, you are to get in trouble for, you know, essentially like making too many requests to the web server. And you really like don't want to run into those issues. So the less requests you make, the better. What we're doing here is we're making the request one time, restoring the data within the soup variable. Oh, you know what I bet it is? Uh, the soup variable isn't updating. So we'll run that, run that. Nope, same exact thing. Huh. Yeah, whatever. Um, anyway, so we're only making this request once. We're loading it within the soup variable and we're able to parse this out as many times as we want. And we could even change things by, let's go ahead and get rid of btc-usd here and let's save it. Um, and if we run this cell again, if we run this cell again and we run this cell again, then we'll get 37.33. Obviously that's the price of Solana, I hope. Let's do SOL dash usd 42 27 yeah again the scraper's not working but you get the idea essentially you don't have to make the request a thousand times which is super super useful um you don't want to make the that request like a billion times in order to pull this data down um while you're testing now obviously once it's in production it's going to be a little bit different but while you're testing you don't want to make a thousand different requests so this can really be nice for things like you know data science or machine learning when you are only really wanting to train that model once. Like it may take hours in order to train a model. You really only want to do that once. So you want all of that data to be saved one time and then later on in other cells, you can actually do your tests off that data, view the data itself, things like that. So really that's about it. There's, there's a billion different other reasons to use Jupyter Notebooks, but that's kind of like the basic idea of how you would use Jupyter Notebooks and um, a really crappy scraper to serve as an example of like, you know, the different use cases. Now, I personally am trying to learn more mathematics. I am trying to learn more machine learning and a lot of the other kind of super scientific things within computer science. So I'm going to be using a ton of Jupyter Notebooks in the future. And I really hope that you enjoy this stuff because you're kind of stuck with it now. So take it easy. I really hope that you guys start to enjoy these kind of new series that I'm starting to do after the channel pivot. Um, but you know, Jupyter Notebooks are rad. You really should start playing around with them. Peace.